Right, to try and freshen things up a little bit, I've decided each week that I'm going to do my introduction with a slightly different intonation. So, good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. That was rubbish, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Anyway, what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, in my series of great artists who've inspired me, we had a go at a painting by Edward Sego. I'll link up here if you haven't seen it. Now, I did another Sego painting in one of my uh, weekly art classes, and it went down really well. So I thought we'd have a go at this lovely little watermelon, watermelon, <laughs> at this lovely little water meadow, again, by Edward Sego. So come and join me, and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Arsh Cold Press, 140 pound, and it's on a block, so it won't need stretching. My colors today, I've got some French Ultramarine, a little touch of Prussian Blue, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, and Burnt Umber, and just three brushes from my range, a number 12, a number six round, and of course, my trusty number three rigger. Okay, so here's the original Sego painting, which I have to say I absolutely love. The light coming through the trees and the misty soft feel with all those gorgeous muted greens. I also love the combination of the soft lost and found edges with some crisper dry brush strokes, all very carefully thought out. Now I'm going to follow it fairly closely, but perhaps just saturate the colors a little bit to make it my own. So just a quick pencil sketch, no drawing template today. It's nice and simple. Too much pencil work can inhibit what you do with the brush. Off we go. And as I want to wet the whole paper very quickly, I'm using this large hake, or is it hake? You say tomato, I say tomato. No, but I'm sure it's originally an oriental brush and pronounced hake. So let it soak in for a minute. Then a watery mix of French ultramarine at the top and bottom and a little cadmium yellow through the middle. Now while this is still wet, I'm dropping in with my flat brush a few vertical water reflections using a mix of French ultramarine with just a little touch of cadmium yellow. And then tilting my board almost vertical to let the paint run down. Now these weren't in the original painting, but I just thought they'd make a nice touch. And here I'm just soaking up any residue water along the bottom just in case it kicks back into the wash. Now let this totally dry then I'm coming back with a fairly good spray into the sky area as I really want this to look like a really nice soft blurry feel to these distant trees. And this first mix is a 50-50 mix of French Ultramarine and Cadmium Yellow. So all of my greens today are going to be mixed from these two. And here, this tree is almost totally French ultramarine blue, as blue will always help to send things back into the distance. And here is just a touch of burnt umber to add a little variation. So now for these trees, and this is where I really want to get that combination of soft and hard edges. So I'm starting by laying the brush flat to the paper to create this lovely dry brush technique, picking up the texture of the paper. Now you'll have to excuse me for my slightly gravelly voice today. I've had a bit of a cold this week, so I'm sounding all a little bit berry white here. <laughs> So lots of nice soft wet in wet, dropping in paint, dropping in blobs of water and adding in a touch more blue to vary those greens, even a little splattering. Them. 
Right, so spray again for this side. And I'm very much painting in the same way, but adding in some yellow ochre and some bluey greens, all done wet and wet. So if you want to neutralize your greens and just dull it down a bit, then adding in the third primary, in this case some alizarin crimson, will give you that slightly muted color, but not too much or it'll turn brown. Again with the bank here, lots of wet in wet, and I'm also adding in some burnt sienna and letting the colours mix on the paper. And because I've used French Ultramarine, I'm getting lots of lovely granulation in the washes. Now with my number six brush and some burnt umber for the trunk and branches and using clean water again to get that combination of hard and soft edges.
So now for another one of my pep talks with me painting in real time. So the question is, is there any merit to copying a master's work like I'm doing with this Edward Seagull? The thing is, you should strive to paint your own things, especially outdoors in the open, like I'm sure Seagull did with this painting. But you can definitely learn a lot from studying what the greats did. Now with this painting, I've really looked into the techniques and the brush strokes he would have used, and it will really help me in my own work. So, I'm obviously not intending to sell this as my own work, but merely using it as a learning process and enjoying the experience, as I hope you will too. But now it's time to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break and another glass of what is totally made up, a seagull ale. Next, with this distant tree, I've just wanted to add a little touch of detail on one side, but just very subtle and softening with clean water. Okay, so now for these old lock gates and I'm coming in with a fairly milky wash of burnt umber. Now to mix a nice dark sort of Payne's grey type colour, I'm adding in to some burnt sienna, some ultramarine blue. But just don't mix it too thoroughly as it's good to get some separation on the paper. Lovely. And letting it blend into the original wash. Now back with my number six brush for these smaller details. and then drying my brush with a tissue and lifting out these lighter areas. And a touch of the grey mix here. Next with this bank on the right here and there are far too many mixes for me to list them all. But again, I'm letting the colours mix and blend directly on the paper, dropping in lots of wet washes and clean water to soften the edges into the lock gates. And I'm showing this section again in real time. Okay, now for the water reflection, and I'm using my number six brush here. Now, to get this more turquoisey feel to this color, I'm adding into my ultramarine 
Kevin Yellow mix some Prussian Blue. Softening the edges into the bank with clean water. And it's important you get that nice little gap of light between the reflection and the lock gate. Over on this side, I'm back to a more yellow, yellowy green. And again, a combination of dry brush and the wet in wet technique. So if you look again at the Seago original, this left corner is all very loose and impressionistic, helping to focus the attention on the more realistic lock gates. And you can see clearly he's used a lot of upstroke bright <laughs> and you can see clearly that he's used a lot of upstroke dry brush strokes, which I'm trying to copy here, adding in some burnt sienna and blending out the bottom with some very wet washes. Again, too many washes to list them all, but just experiment and have fun. for something I'm sure Seago didn't do, but I can't resist a bit of splattering and scoring with the end of my paintbrush. Here, just a little more definition with some burnt sienna and the grey mix. And yes, an appearance by my trusty number three rigger for these grasses and reeds. Then with a damp tissue, a touch of softening and dragging down, picking up a little texture from the paper. And I think we're done. So I've used a fairly different colour choices to the original and I've increased the size of the lock gates a little, but I've definitely learned a lot from the exercise. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Just make it your own, experiment, put in your own colours, 
don't try and match mine exactly. And as always, just have fun and, in, and in, ooh, I blame it on the cold. Just have fun and in, enjoy the experience. And of course, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment. I do read everyone. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Hopefully feeling a little bit better for another Watercolour Wednesday. Take care now.